What up guys, Machado here, back with another car video. <laughs> well, uh, we just got back from ARG Richmond, as many of you guys, uh, many of you guys uh, might have heard. Um, it was a great time, it was uh, fantastic actually. It, we, we dominated, I mean, there's nothing else to say about it. Uh, we had three guys in top uh, 16, Ben Leverett, Chris LeBlanc, and Gravio Molina from B Team. And uh, a lot of other solid performances, I think Kamal, uh, almost, he barely missed it. I think he finished like 18th, 19th, or something like that. And um, it was a great showing. We had two teams uh, in participation. So we had a PBG A team, which consisted of six members. And then we had PBG B team, uh, consisting of myself and other uh, unaffiliated players that are not officially on the team, but um, were playing for us because they reached out and they wanted to play for us. Um, so we gave him a shirt and we had enough to represent a second team so that was really cool thank you guys uh shout out to you guys that helped out it was avery frank and carter i believe and dan so uh, thank you guys um, unfortunately we only had the PPG A team compete in the team wars at the end of the day so at the end of the day the top two um point getters were the card guys and us the card guys beat us by about like five or six points or something like that um, so at the end of it, the team war, it was just us and the car guys. And for those of you who didn't tune in, uh, that went uh, very back and forth. There were all great matches. The first matchup was Blair Hunter versus Ben Levert. And uh, my, my reasoning here uh, for putting Ben first, I feel like Ben is a very calm collective. I mean, he's been in the spotlight many times before. He knows how to perform um, when everybody's relying on him and we needed to start off with a win for sure I mean we didn't want to start off this team war with a loss so uh, we went with who I felt was feeling the most comfortable the weekend I was you know keeping I was participating in the event myself but obviously in between rounds and stuff I would check out my players and see how they felt uh, how comfortable they were the plays that they were making if they were making the right plays or not um, and Ben, to me, seemed like a very solid option. Uh, the three guys that I chose for the team war, because, you know, as you guys know, you register six people for the team to participate in Swiss, but then when you make it to the team war, it's actually only three players. So we went with the three players at top. I think that made the most sense. I think anybody else would have done that. Um, but I chose Ben to start off because I felt like he would be the most composed and I feel like the one that would set the tone for the match. So uh, that ended up paying off. Uh, he beat Blair, I think, 2-0. No, 2-1. I think 2-1. Blair went first, by the way, because the card guys had more points than us at the end of the team war. So they were going first. So they were at an advantage. They technically should have won. It, it, I know a lot of people talk about this format like, oh, you go first, you automatically win, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, sometimes it does happen like that. It, it depends on what the opponent opens up with, you know, if they have hand traps or if you opened explosive or if you bricked. You know, you can go first and open all hand traps and that would, you know, suck. But that wasn't the case here. Uh, I think they all both, uh, there was not much breaking at all. Um, partly because of the way that the, deck, the decks were composed. Uh, I know a lot of them worked together on the decks. Um, like many of them said in the, in the uh, deck profiles, they spent a whole week at the Leverett's house testing, 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 grinding. Um, also with Noah Green, so it was like all the PPG plus Noah Green were testing, and it's funny how that ends up being, you know, the finals, but I'll get to that later. Uh, as far as the team war, uh, yeah, so Ben beat uh, Blair, and then the second match was a rematch of the finals, which was Noah Green versus uh, Gabriel Molina from B Team. Fun fact, Gabe was the only one on B Team from that team war. So we had two A Team members, Chris and Ben, and then we had our B Team player, Gabriel. And the reason why we went with B team member Gabriel over, you know, anybody else from A team that was still at the event like Kamal Crooks is because he had finished in the top cut and, you know, I felt like he had to, he had something to like redeem himself with. Like I felt like he, he needed rede redemption in his, in his head because of the last team war that we were in. He didn't perform very well. And, you know, it, it was, it was a decision that I don't know many people would have made in my, in, in my shoes in the manager's shoes because you got Kamal Crooks which has been you know on a tear you know I mean he's not going to top every event but 
he tops, I think, 90% of the events that he enters, so it's crazy. And to pick, you know, Gabriel, which has had his struggles, you know, on camera, off camera, um, he's travel. I mean, he doesn't have as much of a success rate, not even close to what, you know, Kamal has output, you know, this season and last season. So it was a hard decision to make there, but I went with my gut. I went with my trust in him and how comfortable he was feeling. He had finished second after Swiss day one, only uh, only getting edged out by Noah Green, who finished first after Swiss day one. And that was only because they drew and one had better time breaks than the other. So to us, we fin he finished first place, went undefeated. You know, he didn't get any losses. He only had a tie. They both finished with a tie to themselves. And so we, you know, I, I trusted my gut and I put him in. It sucks that the they decided that Blair decided the team order as Noah's second because, like, you determine the t uh, the order of team uh, of team members playing. You determine that um, before, like, without knowing what the opponent is actually going to pick. So I had to assume that it hopefully wouldn't be Noah, and Noah would be paired against like Ben or Chris, but. It ends up that Blair picked Noah second, and we picked Gabe second, and then, you know, when they went to sat down, that's, that's when we knew, you know. So, um, I also still had a good feeling about it. I'm like, there's no way, you know, Gabe loses twice in a row to Noah, and uh, that ended up happening, unfortunately. But Gabe battled it out really well, and it, it, they were still great games. Like, the finals were great games. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out on ARG. We'll probably upload it on our channel later uh, with some commentary and after asking ARG for of course and uh, yeah, there were the great games Noah ended up beating edging him out again so the, the team war was now at one to one so this is this is what every team manager expects you most of the time especially against a competent and uh, well-managed team like the card guys they were all on a hot streak this weekend they had a great showing at the event as well but um, a few of their players had to go and I still think they had a very strong lineup. I mean, they had the champion in Noah Green. They had Blair Hunter, which didn't do very well at the event, but is still an excellent player. For sure, they're top three players. And then, um, I forgot his name. Uh, damn it, I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Um, Ryan Levine, sorry. <laughs> Ryan Levine, which is an excellent player as well. I think he's very spell spoken. He's always well, comp uh, he's very. He understands the format very well all the time. He, he's usually the commentator for the stream, so he knows exactly what's going on. And I feel like that was definitely a strong lineup. Um, I don't think anybody else there would have been better in any of their places. So uh, I'm 100% sure where they had their best players there. And we had uh, the best players for the day. You know, we didn't we didn't go with overall, you know, best players or else Kamal obviously would have been over Gabe. But I went with my gut. I didn't go with lifetime performances. I went with how comfortable they felt in the event. So that's why we went with who we went with. And, um, yeah, so the last match was uh, Ryan uh, versus Chris LeBlanc. And LeBlanc also had a pretty strong day. He did not make it to... He didn't make it past top 16 because he got a deck list error. Uh, he forgot to write the number of Cosmic Cyclones on his deck list. He put Cosmic Cyclone. He just didn't put the number of Cosmic Cyclones. So... Even though there was 13 cards in the sideboard, plus a Cosmic Cyclone, which would have been 14 if he played one, which makes no sense. Um, he obviously played two, so... Uh, for this team where he was down a Cosmic Cyclone, Jim was like talking to me, are you sure you want to use them even though the deck was there? Because they have to use the same deck from the main event. So he would still have to play uh, with either one Cosmic Cyclone or zero so Cosmic Cyclones. I'm not sure what it was. But I knew that wasn't going to be an issue because nobody was going to be playing uh, True Zodiac, um, True King Zodiac in... Uh, in the team war so you know I put him in anyways and you know I felt like Chris Chris's demeanor I don't know if many of you guys have met him or played against him he's um, you know he has that winning mentality always like a very strong winning uh, mentality and that's what you have to have sometimes in these positions he's been there he's done it before he's got three rings he's got three wins uh, and that's saying a lot. That's that's more than a lot of other teams. You know, I think that that beats a lot of other teams that are actually out there and assembled just in one guy. And this guy's been playing since you know he's been like I don't know 14, 15, 16, something like that. And he's a lot of, had a lot of success. He's always surrounded himself with very good players, and he's always tested with the best. So he put himself. He definitely put himself in the position to do um, 
very well with his career, and which is why his career shines uh, atop a lot of others. I think he, um, I think he passed Tyree Tinsley on the champ rank this weekend, so he did really well, and he's finally back, and he felt really comfortable. And I think it was, if it wasn't for that game loss, um, I think he would have definitely made it a lot farther in the in the swim, in the uh, top cut. But anyways, um, yeah, Chris finished uh, Ryan very swiftly. Actually, it was a 2-0, pretty fast, very confident. Chris, I, I think he was the, I think he's the best under pressure, which is why I put him in that cleanup spot, and he ended up delivering. And you know, I didn't regret my decision. It, it was great. We we're really ecstatic at our second team war victory, and uh, probably games has you know, you know, shown again why we're the premier team in the league. Um, the guys showed a lot of resiliency. They showed a lot of composure. Um, and, and they were just very solid performances throughout in the weekend. And you saw the result of their work that they put in uh, pay off. And you saw how much they tested and how much they, uh, how much thought they put into their car choices between the whole week that they were testing you know, at the Leverett House, which is why I love these guys because they, they strap down, they know what, what's at stake, and they go and prepare how they need to prepare and you know it showed off for for the most of them i mean people are going to have bad showing sometimes and, and that happens because one it's you know so you know variants and uh two you know people can be you know just drawing better than you sometimes so shout out to them again uh, i'm really proud of the guys i'm really proud of gabe especially because he like i said he hasn't had a good year he hasn't had a very good season uh this is his fourth top now or third top fourth top he got second at ARG Orlando, then top Nats, and then I think he topped the YCS, and now this is a uh, second ARG, second place. So I think four tops. Uh, but yeah, Gabe, Gabe has really been showing out, uh, thankfully. Uh, I really appreciate it. Like, this is another guy that, you know, started with zero tops, and when I put him on the team, and then he started topping because of the guys that we, you know, surrounded him with. And, you know, all the all the insight that you get from these players, like Patrick Hope and Fraser Smith, that's why we put these guys on the team so that younger guys like Gabe, and Gabe's only like, what, 18, 19, something like that, um, can learn from, you know, these older veterans and the people that have actually won uh, tournaments. So watch out for Gabe. I think he's going to have a breakout year. Um, he should be topping nationals. Hopefully a lot of the guys should be topping nationals. So other than that, I know I spoke about this a lot already, so I'm probably going to let you guys go. Um, um, uh, the events coming up is going to be regionals this weekend, Kissimmee, which we'll, we'll keep you guys updated on. It's not as, uh, I guess, prestigious as like uh, ARG, but it's going to be regional, and then I think that's it. And then after the regional, I'm going to Mexico for a Pokemon event, and then it's and then it's uh, ARG Atlanta. So we'll see you guys at ARG Atlanta and then Nationals. It's going to be a really fun season. Can't wait to play without Norton. And uh, until then, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, leave some questions and comments on the, vi uh, on the video below. If you guys want to know something that I didn't cover, I'll try to cover you as much as possible. Thank you guys for the support once again watching this video. And good luck at the next event. Say hi. Peace, man.